Seeing no other possible escape route, you climb onto the ledge and carefully lower yourself outside, hoping to find a decent foothold. It is a long way down. Suddenly, you hear a switching noise in your ear. It's joined by two others. You instinctively try to brush whatever it is away, but in doing so, lose your hold on the bricks and fall backwards. Time slows as you fall, and your world turns black. Our guest has awoken, my love. Ah, good evening, dear king. I do not believe we have been properly introduced. I am Count Kaldor, former lord of the realm of Colima. May I present my wife, Countess Lavidia? A pleasure to see you again. In gratitude to you for alerting me to my wife's grave condition, I took the liberty of preparing you a dish. I thought you might be hungry after your harrowing adventure at my window. You will forgive us if we do not join you. Our tastes differ from yours, do they not, my darling? You shudder to think what different tastes actually means, but for some reason you note that you can no longer hear any rats squeaking in the distance. Indeed. So much to become accustomed to. You shall have all the time that the world has to share to grow accustomed to such things. Well, perhaps thirty years. Should the father locate the item by then, there might not be enough world left for anyone afterwards. Has this father to do with why you frequently went abroad, always with that cloak of yours? Most certainly, but I think that my affiliation with him and his association has come to a close. My obligations to them took me away from my beloved too often. I do not wish to repeat that mistake. You are forgiven, my love. Their attention, which seemed to have wavered momentarily, now redirects back to you. Well, well, well. What to do with this one? What were you going to do with him? Kill him. I had quite clear instructions from Hagatha, who had apparently received them from the father himself. But if you are not, as you say, affiliated with his association anymore... They both share a knowing smile. Tell us, King Graham. Why are you here in Kolima? You take a deep breath, trying to ignore the fact that you are the only one capable of doing so, and relate your story of the vision in the magic mirror and your quest to find the three gems of nature. The Count and Countess exchange cryptic smiles. Romancing the stone. Indeed. Obviously, that was a private joke, as you did not understand it. So you search for the one with which you would share the rest of your life. On that I cannot fault you, nor on your intentions here. Therefore, I can forgive the trespassing. However, there is the matter of the dark gem, 
you wish to remove from my castle. I place a deal before you. I am looking for a magnificent sapphire encrusted tiara. It is a valuable family heirloom and has been on this estate for centuries. This castle and its estate are old though. It could be virtually anywhere, in any number of hiding places. I suspect there are many that even I am not aware of. I wish to present this tiara to my wife as a gift to commemorate the eternity we shall spend together. If you can find it and bring it to me before sunrise, then I will give you the gem you seek and your freedom. You nod, unable to believe that you have virtually been ushered away from death's door just so you can run an errand for a couple of vampires. You do not want to think about the consequences if you fail to meet the deadline. You seem to have lost your... You You seem... You take the ham from the dining table. You see a young woman sitting on the dusty floor. She has a book in her lap entitled Little Red Riding Hood. I wish I could read this story. All the pretty words. The book tells the story of a young girl who met a wolf in the forest. The young woman's head snaps up. Her black eyes drill into your own. You gasp as you realize you are looking at yet another vampire. Just how many has the Count made tonight? The young woman's lips transform from hungry to, fortunately, pleasant recognition. So you are the guest of my grandfather's house. I was hoping I would meet you again. The woman is startlingly beautiful, but in an eerie, unnatural way. You find yourself unable to speak for a moment. She does look somewhat familiar, but from where? Oh, my handsome gentleman does not recognize me? Uh, should I? You remember the basket, the soup? With a start, you recognize the young woman. She's grown and matured considerably since you last saw her. The little girl, Possum, has been transformed completely into this. She has traded her small ruby cloak for a dazzling satin robe of the same color. Are you unhappy with my appearance? No, it's just that you have me at a disadvantage. I do not know your real name. Anastasia. A beautiful name. Yes, it was one of the few things my parents left me before they died. They are probably buried somewhere on this island, as a matter of fact. What do you seek here? You explain your so far unsuccessful attempt to locate the tiara. The young woman looks thoughtful for a moment, then suddenly snaps her fingers. A discarded pile of books shift aside from the floor, and a single black book is revealed underneath. She appraises the black book with indignant incomprehension, then holds it out towards you. You take the book from Anastasia's hand. I do not suppose that has anything to do with it, but it must be about something important. 